If you recall from one of the earlier videos, we can represent a function as the relation between two sets, represented here by the two circles. The first set is the collection of all the independent variable values, and this set is called the domain. And the second set collects all the dependent variable values, and this set is called the range of the function. The function matches an element in the domain with exactly one element in the range. In other words, the domain of a function is the collection of all the allowable independent variable values, and the range is the collection of all the resulting dependent variable values. Successfully identifying the domain and range for a function is very important, and I will explain with examples. Let's look at this function, y equals to 9.81x. In general, when a function is represented by a mathematical equation, there is no rule on what x or y can or cannot be. There are exceptions, as we will talk about later. This is because equations are abstract theoretical models. So for this function, x can be any real number, and as a result, y can be any real number as well. And if we sketch its graph, you can see that the graph would extend beyond the background. Therefore, the domain for this function is x can be any real number. This notation means that x belongs to a real number set, or x belongs to the real number interval from negative infinity to positive infinity. But if you are not familiar with the set theory, you can simply write it out as this, which literally means that x can be any number that is bigger than negative infinity and smaller than positive infinity. For the range, since the output can also be any real number, so similarly we have or this. However, for this exactly the same equation, if we say that now it represents a function of the weight of an object in the unit of Newton as a function of the mass of an object in the unit of kilogram. In other words, if you know the mass of the object, multiply that by 9.81, that will give you the weight of the object in Newton. And now this function has a physical meaning. Therefore, it must make sense physically. Since we know that it is impossible for an object to have zero or negative mass, Therefore, the independent variable here cannot be zero or negative. So on the graph, you can see that we have the same straight line, but now it starts at the origin with an open circle. Pay attention to this open circle at the origin. It means that the point origin is not included. However, if on some graph you see a field circle, that will mean the point is included. So the domain is x belongs to the real number interval from 0 to positive infinity. Here, the round bracket in front of the 0 indicates again that 0 is not included. If it is a square bracket, as we will see later, then it will mean that a certain number is indeed included. Or you can write simply, x is bigger than 0. Similarly, the range will include any positive real number as well. Let's look at this function, y equals to the square root of x. Even though it does not have any physical meanings, we know that x cannot simply be any real number. The reason is because we know that the square root of a negative value is undefined. And since domain of a function is the collection of all the allowable independent variable value, in this case, x is not allowed to be negative, Therefore, the domain for this function is x must be bigger or equals to 0. Or you can write it this way, x belongs to this set, the interval from 0 to positive infinity. Notice the square bracket in front of the number 0, which indicates that 0 is included. And this is known as the implied domain, which means that mathematically, you cannot include any x values that will make this equation undefined. And if we look at the graph for this function, 
the graph of the function starts from the origin with a field circle at the origin, again indicating x equals to 0 is included. And the resulting y value can also be anything bigger or equals to 0, and that is the range for this function. Let's look at another example of implied domain. We have a function y equals to the square root of x squared minus 4 divided by x plus 4. Here, we have two requirements that we must satisfy. Otherwise, this function will be undefined. The first one is, whatever is underneath the square root must be non-negative. It could be positive or zero. The second part is, the denominator must not be zero. So let's look at these two requirements separately. First, x squared minus 4 must be non-negative. It must be bigger or equals to zero. And let's try to solve this inequality. We do the rearrangement. So x squared is bigger or equals to 4. And then we take the square root on both sides. Pay attention here. The answer is not x is bigger or equals to 2. The answer should be the absolute value of x is bigger or equals to 2, which means two things. x could be bigger or equals to 2, or x could be smaller or equals to negative 2. Pay attention here because this is a very common mistake that students make, not include the negative half of it. Then, the second requirement, the denominator cannot be 0. This one is easier to solve. x cannot be negative 4. We can represent the domain on a number line. So x must be bigger or equals to 2. Here you see the field circle that indicates that positive 2 is included. Or x could be smaller or equals to negative 2. But at the same time, x cannot be negative 4, so that point is taken out. Or it could be represented on the number line this way. When you write out the domain for the function, keep in mind that it has to satisfy all the requirements simultaneously. Or it could be written this way. For a piecewise function, normally its domain is very easy to determine. Just look at these. These tell you for what x intervals the function is defined. Therefore, these consist of the domain for this function. So for this function, we simply need to combine these x intervals and get the domain for this function as x belong to the interval from 0 to 30, including 0, not including 30. Or you can simply write it this way, x is between 0 and 30. And if we want to determine the range for this function, we can simply sketch the graph for it and determine the range. Lastly, sometimes the function is not written for you as an equation. Instead, the graph of the function is given to you. And you can determine the domain and range from the graph. For example, from this graph, we can determine that the domain for this function is from negative 2 to positive 3, including negative 2, not including positive 3. How do we know? Because we can determine that from the field circles and the open circles from the graph. And also, there's another interval that is from positive 4 to positive 7, not including 4, including 7. And that is the domain for this function, because from the graph of this function, we can tell that these are the only intervals for which the function is defined. For example, if you want to find the value f8, you cannot find it because at x equals to 8, there is no corresponding function value on the graph. And of course, you can write this domain to be this way. And from the graph, we can also read the range for this function, which is simply the collection of all the resulting y value to be 